Hey guys, welcome to Trinity Force Podcast. My name is Adam Pona, Phobia Cogs. We'll listen to episode number 291. I'm sitting here with Chira Jaden of the Trinity Force proper. Say hi, Chira. What's up? And I'm sitting here with Dennis Fong, CEO of Raptor. Hi, Dennis. Hello. How uh, are you so, guys? Oh, sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. I just kind of want to jump right in here. We uh, we were recording and then things happened and now we're back into recording again. So Adam Dennis- made a boo-boo, <laughs> so just blame Adam. <laughs> They're used to it. All, all of our listeners are used to me screwing something up. So, Dennis, uh, you were just explaining to us who you are uh, and what Raptor is and all that good stuff. So jump into it one more time, please. Sure. I mean, name is Dennis Fong. I'm also known as Thresh in gaming circles. Um, I was the world's first pro gamer back in the 90s in a game called Quake, uh, or a series of games, Quake being one right. of them. Uh, and uh, if you play League and you've played Thresh the Champ, um, it was actually named after me. Um, and Riot was nice enough to give me the Thresh username, so we may have played together on, on League, uh, in NA at least, um, because I play as Thresh on NA. Um, and um, I'm the CEO of a company called Raptor, um, which recently, about five months ago, launched a new service called Plays.tv, which is essentially a ridiculously easy way to share you know, your best moments from um, any game. Although with League of Legends, we have some really cool features where we use live game data to figure out all the cool stuff that you're doing and then automatically create highlights for you so it makes it even easier to share. Sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, e- easy way to jump in there. So why don't we talk a little bit about you and talking about, uh, you said you were the uh, world's per- first pro gamer. Can you kind of talk about what, what was your rise to fame and how you became the world's per- first pro gamer? Because I mean, that's, that's going to be a story. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, I mean, it was just by accident, honestly. Just like most humble beginnings of most, almost anything. It's, it's just completely happenstance. Um, you know, I was playing online games when they first came online. Um, didn't realize I was really any good at them. Uh, but as I started playing against people and competing in kind of local tournaments, um, just never lost. Um, so... Uh, one day, a uh, publication, this is back in 1990, I can't remember, I was in 95. Um, uh, I was 16 or 17 at the time. This publication called The Wall Street Journal uh, <laughs> reaches out to me and said, hey, we're doing this story in online gaming. We heard you know, that you're the best player and this thing is a cool. We come over and just follow you around for a day just to see what this whole thing is about. Um, so I, he came over. I had completely forgotten that he was coming over. <laughs> um, in fact, he, I think he came over at like noon and he had woken me up. Uh, you know, I was say, it's, typical it's, typical <laughs> change role, right? It, it's <laughs> only the Wall Street Journal, not like that's a big deal or anything. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, I was just like, you know, and I was living at my parents' house and, and I was like, ah, oh, man, dude, you just woke me up. Can you come back in an hour? <laughs> like the poor guy goes back to his car and waits there uh, for an hour, comes back. Um, you know, it's good sport about it. It ended up writing an article that ended up on the front page of the Wall Street Journal um, with a little stencil drawing of me next to Bill Clinton. <laughs> um, and that literally is what launched my career. Because up until then, it was like pretty small prize money, no sponsorships. Um, and literally the day after, big companies started calling and saying, hey, we'd love to sponsor you. We'd like to hire you for consulting, blah, 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 blah. And within... Within a year or two, I was I was making over a hundred thousand dollars a year from uh, from being a pro gamer. Wow! So yeah. what's it, what's it like being seventeen and being contacted, and suddenly you have all of these companies? I, I'm assuming you had like Intel, right? Because they were just up and coming around 90, 95, 97. Uh, Do you remember some of the companies that came out to you and kind of and what yeah, they were offering? Yeah, there was like a company called Earthlink, which was an ISP. Uh, yeah. um, in California. I remember. Earth, yep. Uh, they, they sponsored me. Um, uh, I think uh, there was a company called Diamond Multimedia, which was, uh, they were making video cards at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, there was, I can't, there was, there were a bunch. Right. Sure, sure. I, I was, I'm, I, I'm curious because um, I started my gaming career at around, I don't know, 12, 13, around, you know, 95 to 97. So around those time, I was using the same stuff as Earthlink and the, you know, the, uh, all the other up and coming products. ICQ yeah. and whatnot, all the you know the, the first so, generation stuff. I was I was sponsored by Microsoft to use their mice. There you go. You know, but yeah, I mean, I had an agent. <laughs> uh, you know, that was way back in the '90s. So you, I mean, there's been an ebb and flow 
um, you know, kind of became popular and then it kind of died off for a little bit and then Fatality became in, made it kind of popular and then it died off and then now obviously it's huge. So it's been right. fun to watch the ebb and flow of this uh, this industry. Well, speaking of ebb and flow, so you're, you are now the, uh, you're now the number one world's gamer, you know, whatever, the, the first professional gamer, I, I apologize. And uh, you have, you know, you've grown up to five, ten years or whatever have passed. How did you, how did you take your status as a professional gamer and move that over and make Raptor into the company? And, you know, what was the inspiration behind Raptor to, I'm, I'm eventually moving us over to League of Legends stuff here, but I kind of want that whole timeline laid out. Yeah, I mean, well, the timeline goes far, way farther back than that. I, this is actually the fourth company I've started. Okay. Um, the reason, actually, I retired from pro gaming, which was in 2000. So right right, like right around when Quake 3 started, um, came out and was starting to get popular, was because at that time, by that time, I was running a company of over 100 employees. Um, and with a new game, I knew that I didn't, I just, I no longer had the time to... Uh, really learn all the nuances and master the game that like, I needed to, to in order to be competitive. Mm -hmm. So I was a world champion of Doom, you know, all the Doom series, Quake, Quake 2, and then Quake 3 is when I just kind of said I, I, I just can't do it anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, I started companies, but all the companies I started were basically to, to solve my own personal frustrations as a gamer. <laughs> um, You're you just going to fix things yourself. Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, because the problem, I mean, it's less less so now with the rise of services like Twitch and, you know, other community-oriented stuff. But back then, even now, a lot of game companies' community is, like, secondary. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's like, it's an afterthought. And so all the tools, the way to connect with people, the social platforms, all that kind of stuff was always secondary, which just annoyed me to no end as a gamer. Well, that uh, that's actually been kind of a part of what's helped with our podcast success as well is that we've been able to give listeners a sense of community and I know I love interacting with our community and I, I hope that they enjoy interacting with us just as much but uh, I, I think that's something that's definitely kind of pushed to the side in a lot of people's minds for some reason. Yeah I mean you know obviously you have the rise of social platforms like Twitter and, and whatever that now connect people that almost everybody's on um, but if you just re just rewind like five years ago, what platforms would you go on as a gamer to kind of right. stay connected and, and communicate and so on and so forth, right? So because they wouldn't build it into games, right? And back then Steam sucked ass. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And people weren't necessarily <laughs> throwing their personal gaming information out on Facebook left and right. <laughs> Facebook didn't even exist back then. Right? So like the first company, one of the first companies I started was a company called Xfire. Right, mm -hmm. which was a uh, IM made for gamers. So we invented the concept of an in-game overlay. We invented the concept of being able to see what your friends are playing. You know, we I, I I used Xfire a lot uh, during probably 2006, 2007, maybe 2007, 2008, while playing World of Warcraft because yeah. oh, it yeah. was great. Yeah, uh, yeah. And a lot of the stuff that you see built into Steam today was invented actually at Xfire, and Steam kind of followed suit. Uh, you know, years later. Right, mm -hmm. and. Uh, built an awesome platform, you know, at this point, but it took them, you know, people forget how long it took them to get to actually something mm -hmm. decent. Um, so, you know, x was a good example of something that I created out of my own personal frustrations. Um, and, you know, Raptor and Plays.TV is um, exactly the same thing. So I, I don't really create companies or products for the money. It's because, you know, I, I, nobody else is doing it. So I just figured sure. I got to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's something that we're trying to do over here. Uh, at the the network again, it's the whole community thing. We're trying to give players a, a place that they they can do things. And one of the biggest frustrations that we've had as a community is um, just so those people people out there are aware. But we run a Patreon where we do replay reviews, right? And so uh, something that we've always been looking to is what's the best replay platform. And we've kind of been we've been looking into Plays TV, and you know, one of the reason we've uh, anything speak, that but anything yeah is go ahead. easier than certain replay <laughs> platforms that we're using that break every other week. Uh, would really appreciate if we could get something working that actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> that has probably been our biggest frustration through, run, through running all this is getting some kind of replay platform or even a highlight platform or anything that anybody can be like, what did I do wrong in this play that I just made here? Why, why did my, you know, why did my thresh die when he hooked and, 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 you know, whatever it may be. And it sounds like place TV might be the answer to some of these, these questions that our players are having. So, um, 
why don't especially, we especially especially with Riot not putting in their own baked in replay system. So why don't you tell us a little about what you got going here with this League of Legends thing? So I also want to talk to you about you playing League of Legends and also how that uh, translates into being a pro gamer as well. I got some more questions about that. Yeah, so Place TV is uh, it's both a, a, a like an, an app that you can download uh, on your PC as well as a, a, a website and community. Um, the the client application it's a video capture software that's kind of it's probably the, it's probably easily the most advanced video capture software for gamers. Period. Um, it's super lightweight, almost almost zero. It's like less than three percent impact, three percent impact on your system okay. while it's recording. It does all the recording on its own. It's automatic, so it doesn't record your desktop in case you were surfing a website that. You know, <laughs> uh, but it, it records when you jump into a game, and it's smart enough to know when each uh, that start and end of each match. Um, so you don't have to you don't have like an eight hour video of an eight hour session that you played. Um, and uh, you know what it does for League of Legends uh, specifically. And we have uh, similar stuff that's rolling out for CSGO and Dota 2 very, very soon, just a matter of weeks, um, is the ability. So it records any PC game. And at any point in time, you can just hit a button. Whenever something interesting happens, you hit a hotkey or your mouse button if you bind it to that to save like a moment. But for League of Legends, it actually reads the live game data as it's happening to figure out all the key moments that are worth saving. So you, you know, when you exit the game, you'll have this interactive timeline of your match. Like we know what you kill, death, assist, and all that stuff that you got in the game. But we also know when each of those moments happen and they're already bookmarked in the video itself. So you get your own personal highlight reel that it finds that, for you. It's, it's like literally you'll have, like let's say you played a 45 minute match. Yeah. Every kill, death, assist, dragon fight, baron fight, pentakill moment is already bookmarked for you. And we okay. know looking at the game data, literally when that moment started and when it ended. So it's also pre-edited. So the gotcha. beauty of this is, like, let's just say you're like, oh man, I got that quadra kill. You don't have to go through and fast forward to replay. You don't have to go dig through a 60-minute video. It literally takes you, like, from exiting the game like to finding that quadra kill moment will take you, like, three seconds. You can just click on it, and then because it's pre-edited and it's in the form of a video, you can you can just click play, and it'll actually just play that clip by itself. Okay. And then share it, you just click share, and then boom, it's it's live on, on the internet. Now, what about what? for those of us that don't have a lot of hard drive space? Is this saved all locally, or do you save it up on your servers when these replays are recorded? Uh, it does both. Okay. So it um, you, you can allocate how, how, however much storage that you want on your hard drive. Um, obviously, it's made for gamers. Um, we're not trying to make it more frustrating for you. So part sure. of what it does is um, it automatically deletes the older files. So let's just say you allocate three gigs of your hard drive space to it. Then as you record new ones, it's deleting the old ones for you. And then any clip that you upload, you have the option, if you wanted to, to always delete that locally as well. So you know, okay. the, whole, the whole platform's free. You can store as much as you want on the web. So if you want to just store everything on the cloud on Place.tv, you can do that um, and not have anything on your hard drive, honestly. But it's totally up to you. Now, now, does this Place TV, now does this replay program, because, I mean, already it sounds awesome because I can, I can go get all of my awesome highlights, especially if I'm, you know, I, I make an awesome play, I get a pen and kill, I can post that to wherever I want, I can post it to, to the community. Um, does, now, are we able to get the entire replay for that entire match, from like a spectator point of view, like other replay programs, or from a point of view type of display does that record the entire game and do we have access to that entire file so it's not a it's not a replay file okay right, right. So it's not the spectate view it's actually your, your view direct player point of view which <laughs> is um in some ways better because yeah. you know it's missing obviously the ability to jump around but the nice thing is um you you can actually see your mouse clicks and your mouse cursor so you can see what you're clicking on you can see your fog of war um, and so, you know, one of the things, you know, that, you know, we've seen, obviously, um, uh, like a bunch of the TSM guys like Bjergsen and Dyrus and stuff and Team Liquid guys have been using it um, pretty actively and sharing a bunch of clips. But what, we, what they told us was that they, they're now, their coaches and analysts now use it hmm. actually to help teach their players how to get better because, um, number one, now they have the player point of views of every, every player, but they also right. get to see what they're seeing. 
right? So like, and seeing what they're clicking on. And that, is- that's, that's something that we've hit at as well If with people sending us replay reviews. If we can see what you're looking at, we can kind of get into your mindset a little bit and that if you're paying too much attention to one thing or not enough attention to something else, uh, we can we might be able to see exactly that, which yeah, helps I us mean, as well. A huge part of the game is like what you're looking at, like how you know are you looking around at the map a lot, or are you just looking at yourself? Like how how much are you keep, keeping track of the mini map? What are you clicking on? Are you misclicking? Like what's your fog of war? Like all of that stuff is like a huge element of the game that uh, a traditional replay system doesn't capture. Right, mm-hmm. and also, of course, the real point of Place TV beyond using it as a as a self learning tool is to share these things, right? right? So, the point is like you can go from within ten seconds of exiting a game, having a clip, a highlight from that session shared on the web, and part of what we can do with League as well is we know every player that appears in the clip, and we'll actually automatically tag them, kind of like okay. Facebook. That's cool. So, like, you know, if you're, if you're playing a game with your buddy or your buddy did something stupid, you can upload a clip and he'll immediately get notified that he, you know, he has a clip of him that's, at, that's now live on the web. Now, how easy would it be for me to log in here, make a Trinity Force Network channel, upload an image, and, and again, turn it into a channel where I can start, you know, pushing ed- uh, educational pieces? Let's say I want to use it for educational pieces. This is how I got this quad or kill, you know, and I can kind of talk through it or whatever it may be. Is it easy for me to do that? I understand it's all live and I don't really get my voice, but at the same time, is it easy for me to upload those? And even even after the fact, can I, am I able to download the file, like that that little clip that I made? So the it's all recorded locally. So you actually have the entire oh, okay, match. Cool. You have the entire match on your, on your system as well as all the clips um, from that match. Um, as you said, it's, it's, uh, you know, we don't have any capabilities where you can add a voice overlay um, right, right. to the fact, um, you'd have to use some editing software. Um, well, but, that's, I, I, sorry, I kind of went to two questions there. One was how easy was it for me to make a, a T force network channel? I mean, I've, I've honestly, I've looked at a lot of this stuff already and I want you to explain it from the horse's mouth. And yeah, it's super easy. So let's and, talk about that first. But I mean, again, it's, it's really, it's. It, uh, the way you would have to do it would be you have to drop the videos into the Place TV folder, mm. right? Because okay. you have you have a client, um, and so you just drop it in that folder, and it's it's dead simple to upload them. Um, and then part of what the client has is it's kind of like Instagram, where you can like instantly and simultaneously share to all your social networks. So you can have it shared to YouTube, Twitter, Reddit, Facebook with a click of a button. Um, so that's part nice. of what. You know, that's part of what we're trying to do there is just make it easier for you to, to share, you know, with the people that you care about. Sure, I see a lot of value in this for uh, for a lot of our listeners because there's a lot of people out there who are, um, again, trying to get better, but they just want specific uh, – they just want specific pieces on their play. They don't want to pay for an entire replay review, for example. They don't want 60 minutes of what they did wrong. They want to go, I was in this team fight, and I have a question about this. Why did this happen? And I see a lot of value in that for communities that want to use it to not only share awesome moments but also to get better at the game. And that's kind of, you know, that's what we focus on over here. And, and uh, you know. That's basically what it is. I see a lot of I see a lot of value in this for players out there who can go who who want to get better, want to post those clips to social media, whatever it is, and say, again, I was Caitlin. Why did I die in this team fight? Yeah, no, actually, that happens a lot because a lot of the pros now use it, as I said. Um, and I've I've been watching. I've watched them those clips and be like, did you did you auto attack in between there? Like, <laughs> that's really hard to tell. And you know, they're just right. answering me because it's a social platform as well. You know, like, oh yeah, I weaved an auto attack in between this, and I, you know, I did this, this, and that. So that that's already happening. So absolutely, I think it could be useful there. Um, we all, there's also the you could also use it to uh, create a highlight reel itself. Okay. So um, you know, creating a highlight reel literally takes almost just as much time as sharing a clip. All you have to do is you hold Control, just like on Windows, and you select four clips. You click share, and then Plays TV will stitch them together into a highlight reel for you. So uh, you know, you know, there's, you know, our goal is just to make it really ridiculously simple. Um, you know, then that's that's kind of what it is right now. Yeah, I mean, I played with it a little bit before this, and it did. It was very easy to put together my clips and 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 to get exactly what I wanted out of the program. But it's sometimes it's a lot easier to hear it from the horse's mouth to why I'd want to use this program rather than play with it on my own. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, let's talk about a little bit about League of Legends then, since it's what this was made. And you said you made this for a reason. 
but let's let's st take a step back from there. What got you into League of Legends? And and yeah, well, why why League of Legends from Quake and, and from all the other games you've played? Uh, so League of Legends, you know, for me, it's like a social thing. Right. Um, it was probably it probably is the only game where at any time I can log in and I see you know, at least a dozen, if not more friends, you know, this could be Facebook friends or whatever, just like general friends that are online. So, you know, it's the first game uh, other than maybe like the first, first month of like StarCraft two coming out where I had <laughs> friends that like logged into Battle.net and like connected right. Facebook and stuff. And everyone that you ever met was on StarCraft. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, because this is like, you know, it's the first time. So, you know, that, that's a big reason. Um, you know, I wasn't a MOBA player before League of Legends. Um, you know, the founders of Riot are, are friends of mine. We hang out. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of guys. I have a lot of friends that work at Riot. Um, so, you know, I mean, it was just an, like a, an amalgamation of different things. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's an awesome game, too. I mean, I, I literally right. play, I play it every single night, pretty much, you know, without fail. So, and, I, you know, I play with a lot of the Riot guys. As I said, I play on. I play as Thresh. I have the username Thresh. You know. You know on on in League of Legends. So like when I feel uh, like that's a lot of pressure to perform on the character that's named after you. <laughs> well, the, the irony, of course, is, uh, you know, I'm an FPS hardcore Quake dueler. Right. Like the last thing I would play is a support. Right, I was gonna, I was gonna make a, a joke if you like to play AD carry more than anything else that you just have a, a want to shoot people, but <laughs> no, <laughs> totally that's not the case. Now you can just hook them, so you're still getting your sniper, uh, sniper practice going on right there. Yeah, the irony, is, of course, is I don't really play Thresh. Right, do, right. Do you play Lucian though? Because you know, the, like the Lucian Thresh combo. Uh, you know, if I was gonna play any, well, I was. Or, or I guess more of like background, it's more lower as what I'm. Doing I really here. should be. You know, I was actually just playing with some of my Riot buddies last night, and we were talking about this, and I, I was giving giving them shit because I actually thought Tristana's kit should be on Thresh because she has a rocket jump, which was invented in Quake. Uh, right, <laughs> right. Was, why, why am I like a support? You know, I should be blowing shit up. You know, like. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I get trolled all the time. Just actually, ask Riot to rebrand that champion, and you're set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get trolled all the time because I don't play Thresh. So, like, literally, at least one out of every two games, it's like, why aren't you playing Thresh, Thresh? Of course, of course. Yeah, right. And you're just like, ha, I, I could ha, see, ha. I could see that getting real old, though. Uh it's cool. I, I, I understand. I understand. Yeah, it's cool. So, uh, I, this is more for a personal for me. Are you personal friends with Certainly T? Because he's the one who designed Thresh. Who? Uh, certainly, certainly T. He was the Never one who designed right. Thresh. No, I'm, I'm not. But I, uh, someone that's on that kind of design team had pinged me before they, you know, as they were working on the champion, and okay. he asked me if it was cool. And uh, you know, at the time, I don't League wasn't actually all that. I mean, it was just on the on the rise, but it wasn't really. It wasn't the game it is today. Right. So honestly, I didn't think it was a big deal. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Who cares? It's just like just some game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and. Then, yeah, and then it's now they've pretty much co-opted my name. You know, people when I play as Thresh, they're like, well, "Why did you name yourself after this champion? You must right. be come." Well, yeah. it's kind of speaking about how League wasn't necessarily the gigantic monster that it is now. Coming from somebody who has sort of seen the competitive gaming sphere built from the ground up, like as a foot soldier of the beginning era to now. How crazy for you is is it to see how far things have come? Yeah, oh yeah, it's 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 crazy, right? Uh, I mean, it's crazy cool, right? Um, I I don't think it could have happened without Riot, um, and I don't think it really could have happened in this kind of way without a service like Twitch. Gotcha, um, Riot because they had the foresight. To uh, and and the money because there's they built such a successful game that monetizing esports is not a top priority for them. You know they 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 invest over a hundred million a year right in esports. 
without really caring about making the money back because they make it back in, in the game that generates whatever a billion and a half dollars <laughs> revenue, right? No big uh, deal. <laughs> but it's a huge gamble, right? I mean, Blizzard could have right. done that 15 years ago with StarCraft. I, a lot of people it, it, are surprised right. Blizzard didn't do it. Like, looking yeah. back, it seems like a major mistake or an oversight on their part. So kudos to the new kids on the block. That's what know. I mean, yeah. And then yeah. And the Twitch, you know, put, gave, you know, Gave people a personality, gave you insights. Right. Into, you know, like it's having LeBron James walking around with a GoPro camera strapped to his chest, right? Who you can interact with whenever you want to type something to them. Exactly, right? right? So that's, I mean, it's that combination of stuff that really turned it into what it is today. It's pretty awesome. So are you trying, back when I used the Raptor platform, it was used as kind of like you said, like that, I don't want to call it Steam Light. But just a way as a social mechanism so that I can speak with my friends, I can share what I'm playing on my social media sites and whatnot. Are you trying to evolve Raptor in the future into be more of Plays TV or are they going to be kind of separate entities? No. So they're, they're actually already completely separate entities. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Raptor's actually moved away from being the social thing. We've, we've sunsetted a lot of those features and really focused on delivering, like optimizing games and hardware. Right. And I, I've seen a lot of that stuff with uh, a lot of the AMD products. When I had a former AMD card, you guys had a pretty solid optimization service through that, which I appreciate. So, uh, yeah. yeah, and we do the same thing for Intel as well. So we work gotcha. pretty closely with both AMD and Intel on the Raptor side. Um, you know, a lot of the technology that we built in Place TV um, comes as part of Raptor. Mm -hmm. so if you want to share, we make it easy for you to do that. But sharing it goes to Place TV. Uh, and then, of course, the, there's a Place TV client which you can download that just does video cast TV sharing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, then, to to wrap back around what we were talking about before, what was the motivation to make Place TV for you? You said you do a lot of things for gamers. What did you think was missing? What did you What did you want that you did not have that Twitch wasn't providing, for example? So Twitch, for someone like me and probably for 99.9% .9 of the audience, the gamers out there, it's pretty intimidating, right? Like, you have to put yourself out there. Um, there has to be something that makes you stand out. You either have to be really, really good or really funny or, you know, you're, you're an entertainer. Right. See, Twitch is no different than, like, Hollywood, like acting, right, for the most part. Right. And so that's not, that's not made for everybody. Um, you know, whereas, as I said, the reason why I play League and I play every single night is for the social part. Of it. And the part that's really funny and great about it is those funny moments. It's like these, like, literally, that, like, you know, I just played a game last night, you know, and we did, like, this crazy level one invade and we epically failed, but we came back and won the game. <laughs> and, like, you know, we laugh about it the next day. We're laughing about it right after the match. We're talking about it right after the match. But typically those moments are, like, gone. There's nothing that captures it. Mm -hmm. It's like, but that's why I, that's the single biggest reason why I play games is for those moments. Like watching my buddy, like do an epic fail tower dive, you know, and you know, like those worth moments, right. like, all the reasons why I play. And I always wanted a way to, you know, it's like, I want to be able to relive that with my buddies. We've, we, it's actually extremely interesting that you say that because when we had Ghostcrawler on our show a few months ago, one of the big things that he was saying is that Riot's in the business of creating those memorable moments. They want to they, they wanna create a game that when you do something awesome, you want to like talk about them with your friends. So I guess this goes perfectly in that same vein. Instead of just discussing with them, you can show them at the click of a button. Yeah, it's like Vitter didn't happen, right? It's like, right, right. <laughs> Oh yeah, I got a pentakill with Maine last night. It's like, show me the evidence, right? Like, there's no easy way to do that right now. And I guess they have no excuse to nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and it's not always the epic moments. It's sometimes the fails are just as funny, you know? Right, and, right. And it just sucks that you can't, you know, it always bugged me that you couldn't relive it with your buddies. So, I mean, that, that literally is the, is the primary reason why, we, you know, we created Place TV. Well, good. I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I hope some of our listeners go out there and use this and kind of send us some clips, post it on our subreddit and whatnot, and say, you know, take a look at this. This was really awesome. This really funny play. I think some guy did that today, actually. Uh, if if Reddit loads quickly, I can say exactly what it was. Oh, yeah, he said best bard alt ever. And that could have easily <laughs> been, you know, clipped, yeah. and he wouldn't have had to go through all the trouble of clipping the play and, and uploading it to a second service. 
And I'm sure a lot of your listeners are, have already seen it because a lot of the pros use it. As yeah, I right. said, you know, TSM and Team Liquid, like, you know, Brooks, those guys have posted dozens and dozens of clips. So I'm sure they've seen it. They probably didn't realize that it wasn't, you know, some YouTube clone website that actually <laughs> it's a platform that actually enabled them to capture and share it. But, you know. Yeah, without people actually talking about it or, or telling you why they're using it, sometimes you just kind of go, oh, that was cool. Close the tab. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's nice to be able to get out there and get the word out. Um, the uh, the cl- couple of last questions I have for you as we move into the the end of the show here is, um, you said everything's about community. Plays TV is about community. Raptors about community, and you're very big in the cu- community of gaming. What is your vision for the next pieces of of community gaming? What is your vision as a company where you would like to see com- the community portion of gaming go to? Do you do you have any of those in the in the works? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I think uh, I think we have a long ways to go with Place TV. I know it's a pretty generic answer, but um, I know that ninety nine point nine percent of gamers aren't sharing right now right. Uh, because it's it's so difficult. You know, it's such a pain in the ass to do it that most people don't do it. But, it's it's inconvenient. Yeah, it's inconvenient. Exactly. You know, so can we or can we or some other company do what, for gaming and sharing? what Instagram did with photos, you know, I, I, there's no reason why not. And, right. you, you know, you said Riot was talking about games, you know, designing the game to be for these epic kind of crazy moments. All games are designed for those. Right. Moments. Right. <laughs> like literally, that's the, reason, like, that's the reason people play. That's literally the single reason. It's a single player game where I just finally beat my own high score. And I just want to remember it for myself, or I want to like, or if I just beat my friend, or I like, you know, wow, I level up. You know, you say ding, grats. Like all of those moments are like worth saving and sharing. And when we play games, like in the community, in the game itself, we are we we do this right. Like ding, grats is a great example. Like in WoW, you level up. Part of the the, the milestone moments. Yeah, it's like your buddies are like high five, man. You know, good job, right? Like. Now you have videos that you know it just takes it to the next level, but most people don't do it. So, you know, I, I think uh, we've got a long ways to go from where we are today. Which is kind of when you're in the midst of it, like we are. It's really like a lot of my day is spent. What is the next big thing, or or you know, where are we going next? Because gaming. I hate to say it, but gaming is kind of fickle, right? We've seen it with all of the games that are out there. Where right. StarCraft is was big forever, but as soon as the next big game comes I was, out, I was about to say you're preaching to the choir with Dennis here. I, I'm sure <laughs> I am, absolutely. But that you know, and that's the whole business model I'm working on here too. And you know, it, really, this is I'm trying to pick your brain. Is how do you how do you look into the future? What you think is going to be next? Because I know you already said that this is where you would like to see gaming community go, but it really maybe you can agree with me it's really dictated on how the community what the games what games the community wants to play is where the community and is what just go happens socially. to catch on fire like look at rocket league for example right so so i i'm not a big believer that you can predict the future right i'm not a big believer that you can um like i ultimately it's about being genuine and authentic to yourself Right. So, you know, I mean, you guys have built up, you know, the Trinity Force Network, probably largely because you're just passionate about it. It's a passion project that's turned into something a little bit more, yeah, right? We're all preaching to the choir at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, you know, I, I don't, I don't really believe in starting something that you don't really believe in, but you think that you can make a lot of money in it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's no way to live life. Right. Right. It's, you know, you just, you know, that's why I said everything comes from humble beginnings. Right. Like, do what you want to do, and if you work hard enough at it, things will fall into place. What other people think you just do because you believe in it, and that you, right. you you love it, and you know maybe maybe it'll pay you back in spades at some point. Can I get you to stand on a soapbox and scream that at every person I've ever seen that it posts on like our League of Legends and says, "I'm making a new podcast. What do you want to hear about?" And yeah, I try to tell people it's not. You need to tell me what I want yeah. to hear, essentially. And if yeah. you're passionate it, about it, we'll do make, it. Make the content that you want to see. And again, you, Dennis, yeah. you've been it, doing he, he's that. He's living. So, he's yeah. living. Yeah, yeah you're living breathing. the dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to see a replay system. Dennis is gonna make it happen, right? Because I hope that other people jump onto it as well. Um, but I kind of want to talk about living the dream and the pro and pro play because you again you were one of the first or you were the first pro player and now you've seen how League of Legends has evolved and they're they're paying their uh, uh, 
they're paying the pro players essentially you know it's it's kind of like mm-hmm. a nfl even though it's not the same thing they're paying their pro players to play the game so there's there's a club paying them anyway um i'm sorry i lost my th- my thought here uh, <laughs> I complete. I'm, I'm sorry. I completely zoned out here. Uh, <laughs> podcasting material 101. Uh, so, so with, with pro players, and you've seen how this has evolved, and you've seen how the pro players have gone. Uh, do you have thoughts as coming from a pro player and moving out where we're at is with like unionizing or having um, people with uh, what is it? Uh, managers or. Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. P- players Coaching, that help protect right. the other players out here from your experience based on what you've seen now. An, a player advocate, so to speak. I think it's inevitable. I think it's coming. I bet you it's here within the next 12 months. I mean, I've heard rumblings of it already with um, some of the guys. You know, I hang out with some of the pro teams, sure. you know, and, and managers or whatever. Um, you know, I think um, there's probably some resistance because the way that um, esports is structured currently between teams, players, managers, agents, uh, sponsors is... Um, it's rather unique is probably the better way to put it um, as compared to most professional sports where there's um, agents that represent players um, to the teams for their salaries and then sponsors and there's team sponsorships, player sponsorships, league sponsorships. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think there is going to come a day where Riot is going to decide to sell the broadcast rights to like an ESPN or something like that, and they're right. going to be making a hundred million, two hundred million, whatever, hundreds of millions of dollars on it, and they're going to have to split that with the teams and the players mm-hmm. as well. Um, so I think all of this is coming. The Hollywood agencies are already kind of getting their fingers in in all of this stuff. So I think it's a matter of time. I think it's going to be a good thing. I think everybody thinks it's a good thing. Um, I think I'm it's not, healthy. It's just a healthy yeah. sort of evolution of how things currently are right now. Someone, as we were just talking about, that really believes in it passionately right. to to kind of herd a bunch of cats <laughs> um, that are <laughs> not into like dealing with this kind of crap. Um, you know, they just want to play, right? right. The players they right. just want to play. The last thing they want to do is like talk about a union and have to meet every week and figure out. What's well, going, and you know, that's a lot of knowledge that they have to teach themselves potentially that is better spent doing what they're professionally doing anyway so well, at the end of I, the day the agents was the word i was looking for earlier when yeah. i was fumbling around for my words but yeah. uh that that's what i was more curious about is is you said you think it's going to go that way but agents are probably going to be our next step here before I, I don't think a union's the answer to our problems by any means but um i, I think well, the are agencies is, Right, yeah. the, the agents being there to protect and like Chira said, so they it's can, it's it's like a player advocate. It'd be it'd be somebody there with the players' best interests in place to That's make cool. sure they're not being taken advantage of, or to make sure they're getting uh, just a fair deal in whatever they decide to do. Well, they they already get that, um, you know, at the team owner level, right? Right, now, right. That's providing that, obviously. Um, well, you you hope they get that for most teams. Certain teams in the past. A little less that's on probably that page true. but yeah but i mean you know so they, they already get some of that some mm-hmm. some teams better than others um you know some would argue that, that even that is not um the best you know there's still some conflict of right. interest there um you know i think it all sort itself out i mean it kind of has to with the amount of money that's going into it right now, <laughs> you, you know so right yeah. um now i know pre-podcast you spoke about some um some projects did did we cover all those projects while we were going over the course of the show or any we announcements did. we were missing yeah dumb. all right beautiful I anything wanna, I wanna anything sure. else you need to plug you want to talk about <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty no. much i want to make sure we got everything that you wanted to talk about before that you know we're inundating you with more with what do you think the pro plays are going to be like right <laughs> <laughs> now i mean again i i uh it's really i really is actually the place tv story because i think it's um you know, we're just starting now. I mean, we've only been live for about five months. Um, we really haven't talked about it much. We've seen really great adoption across pros and esports and and whatever. But you know, we kind of want to let people know about it. So that, that's really that's probably all there is to it. There, that you know, it's free. So why not try it? 
<laughs> yeah, why not? If, it, if you know you're leaving a two percent foot mark on your computer, you can always remove it if you don't find it useful. But I don't see why you wouldn't want to right. leave it running, especially if you can delete that last game or or last I don't know five games or whatever it may be. Or it deletes you your past games for you. That's a huge. It thing. cleans up everything. Yeah. Free automatically. You, you don't have to pay attention to it. That sounds wonderful. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're not trying to add more, more, right. more inconvenience here. We're trying to, we're trying to lessen it. So, well, beautiful. Since we got to think, you guys can find a link to Plays TV sitting here in the channel. You will also find the Trinity Force Network out in Plays TV because I'm sure we'll be using it quite a bit. Um, I'm gonna make Chira install it because that guy he pl he plays games with fans and he does a bunch of stupid stuff, <laughs> <laughs> and it works out. It makes a story. I mean, I mean everything right, we talked right. about. Um, yeah. Dennis, is there anything else you would like to say? Anything else you would like to tell people to te check out besides Plays TV or, or any last words before we start wrapping this up? No. No, thanks for having me here. Yeah, thanks beautiful. for coming on, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we had, we had a lot of fun. It's 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 really interesting to hear it from some um, hear the point of view from somebody who's been in the uh, gaming scene arguably longer than anybody Forever. else. <laughs> for, for the extent of the gaming scene, you yeah. did it. Esports. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, well, yeah, there is that. Yeah, at least esports. Uh, I, I mean, hell, I didn't know esports existed until... I don't think I knew esports existed until League of Legends, so... Sure. Right. I think most people are in that camp, absolutely. So. Right. Uh, uh, all right, Dennis, thank you so much for being on. And guys, thank you so much for listening to the Trinity Force podcast. You can check out Dennis's... Uh, you can check them out at plays.tv. You can also check out the Raptor client, which is R-A-P-T-R dot com as well. So um, anything else that you guys need out there, you can find it in the description. Check us out at trainingforcenetwork.com. Guys, we will see you for episode 292 next week. Peace. See ya.